Hey guys, welcome back to another series on uh, pure mats and coincidentally we'll be doing a uh, module 2 beginning with series and sequences. So for today's class we'll be um, starting from 2018 and one of the first questions you will encounter is a sequence question. So let's look at it carefully and see how we can dissect this question and begin working the answer. So on screen, you guys will see that you have a sequence and they're saying that they have given us some information. They've given you that A1, so let me highlight that here with a different color. They have given you that A1 has the value of root 2 and a n plus 1 is equal to root 2 plus a sub n. Now, what exactly is the question asking us for? Well, a unique read cell tells us that they're saying to state the third term a sub 3 of the sequence. So let's begin writing out that a 3 is what we want to find. And one of the first questions students start asking themselves is, how exactly am I going to begin answering this question? Well, in order to figure out where you need to start, what you have to do is essentially look at what information the question has actually given you. So a sneak peek over here shows you that they've given us a sub n plus 1 is equal to root 2 plus a sub n. Now, if only we could find a value for n such that we could generate a value of a3, then we would be able to draw closer to our answer. Well, in this case, we actually can. Let's just say n has a value of 2, right? So if n were to be equal to 2, then we would generate a3 could be broken down into a2 plus 1, where that n has a value of 2. And now we can actually go ahead and we can use that little formula that they have given us on screen there. So we'll go ahead and we'll begin writing root of 2 plus a sub, if you notice in the question, they gave you this to be n. And what was the value of n that we generated? Well, it was 2. So over here, what we'll do is simply write back that value of 2. So there you have it. On screen, we have found so far, yes, I have said so far, because you'll notice something very, very interesting in our answer. You see our answer still contains a sub 2. And you're really looking for a numerical answer. You don't really want an answer in terms of variables, right? So what can you do to get rid of that a sub 2? Well, you can repeat the same process. So what you're going to do now is that we're going to step to the side and we're going to say, hey, you know, a sub 2 is the same as a sub 1 plus 1. And if we have a sub 1 plus 1, that value over here is really our n value. So using this very same formula here, we are simply going to go ahead and work out our value for a2. And that will simply be the square root of 2 plus a Remember, n is equal to 1, so this value here would be 1. So now that we have a value for a sub 2 being equal to root 2 plus a sub 1, how are we still going to arrive at that numerical answer? Well, there's one key bit of information that the question gave us and that is found in this red box up over here if you notice the question said explicitly that a sub 1 was equal to root 2 so what we are going to do is perform a minor substitution nothing too shabby ah uh, simple all right we're going to do a little substitution i'm bringing this a little bit closer to my screen here 
and I'll write that in a different color so you can see it. So we have found that a sub 2 is equal to root of 2. And we know now that a sub 1 is also root 2. Victory is ours, guys. We have finally attained <laughs> numerical values. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this a2 and we are going to substitute it all the way back into that equation up there. So finally, yes, finally, take a deep breath. We're almost there. You can see that a3 is simply equal to the square root of, draw a big square root sign because it's a big answer, 2 plus a2, and a2 is all of this. So you want to write all of that under your square root sign. So it looks funny. It looks intimidating. But sometimes you need to trust yourself. If your method has been sound and you know you have not made a miss anywhere, just accept that this is the way the answer looks. It looks scary, but chances are it's correct. Okay, guys? So stay tuned for the next part of 2018 coming right up. Okay, guys, thanks for staying with me. So we're looking here at part two to our series and sequence question of 2018. Now, I must admit on screen that this question was very challenging. Okay, so the thought process, you had to really sit down and dissect this question. It's actually a two-part answer. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go through part one with you guys and then I will get into the part two separately so if for exams you guys get a question that has two types of proofs in it you would want to first attempt working out the answers separately do not try to achieve your answer all in one because it will be quite difficult okay so um first of all Let's read the question. They said, use mathematical induction to prove that x sub n is increasing and that it is bounded above by 3. That is, we have that a sub n is less than a sub n plus 1. And a sub n is less than and equal to 3 for all n being an element of the natural numbers. Now, I know most of you guys, when you read that, you've got a heart attack. <laughs> you need to sometimes realize it's just a matter of breaking down the question, all right? So the first thing you'll realize is that this question is a PMI question. Yes, we are dealing with principle of mathematical induction. So that's the topic here. And when you're dealing with these types of questions, you definitely need, definitely need to state your P sub N. So for this question, our P sub N goes as follows. We are going to write down what we are going to prove. And these are the two proofs that you have to generate. Um, that's A sub N is less than A N plus one. That's our first one. And they also want us to prove that a sub n is less than and equal to 3. Beautiful. So now that we know what we are actually trying to show, let's try to uh, start doing that first part. All right, so part 1, which is this section over here. We are going to try to attempt to prove that part, okay? So... Part one, um, let's go ahead and uh, prove, proving that A sub N is less than A sub N plus one. So from previously in the first part, recall that they actually gave us a value for a1. They said a1 is equal to root 2. And uh, if a1 is equal to root 2, then uh, a2, we also found from previously, is equal to root 2 plus root 2. Right? Now, a comparison of these clearly shows that a1 
would obviously have a value that is less than E2 because E2 has this additional part, right? So therefore, what you can see is that statement holds and P1 is true. Not so, sh not so shabby, not too bad, right? It wasn't too bad. Now, as with all principle of uh, mathematical inductions, you must continue. And in your second section is where we usually have an assumption taking place, okay? So in our assumption, we are going to assume that P sub N is true, all right, for N being equal to K. Now, assuming that Pn is true for n equals k, we will set up our statement such that P sub k, right, tells us that A sub k is less than A sub k plus 1, right? So we have simply replaced that little, uh, you know, if you want to say we replaced the k with the n, you know, that's what we did over here. And moving ahead... We will also, if pk is that, then that means pk plus 1 would be a sub k plus 1 less than a sub k plus 2. All right? Now, what do we know? What do we know to make this assumption true? Well, I think I'll change my color here. Now, a sub k plus 1 is equal to root of 2 plus a sub of k. And a sub k plus 2 is equal to root of 2 plus a sub k plus 1. So all I have done is simply use our original formulas or original notation that the question gave us and instead of using n you, you replace it with k right so not too shabby and uh, what we are going to observe is happening here is that i'm going to make my statement now i'm going to make my official statement and we are going to say that since uh, a sub k uh is less than a sub k plus one all right and also a sub k plus 2 is less than a sub k plus 1, right? Therefore, we have finally found that uh, p of k plus 1 is true whenever it's conditional, whenever p sub k is true. All right, guys? So that's the first part of this question, all right? Let's take a little break and we are going to get into answering part two of our proof. Hold on. Okay, guys, so up next, part two. Thanks for sticking around. All right, so we are going to prove that uh, second part of the question there that um, a sub n is less than or equal to 3. So we're going to start off with our p1. Our p1 statement is simply going to be a sub 1 is equal to uh, root 2. That's previously from our part 1 in our question before. And if a1 is equal to 2, then root 2, sorry, we all know that root 2 is less than 3. So therefore, that was a quick one, very nice. Therefore, P1 is definitely true, right? So next statement here, I'm going to change my color. We are going to assume that P sub N is true. Let me just fix that true. All right, there we go. Is true for N is equal to K. And let me see if I can scroll up a bit here. All right. Um, so we are also going to state with that assumption that P sub K, all right, P sub K is such that A K is going to be less than or equal to a 3. And also that P sub K plus 1 
is such that a of a sub k plus 1 is going to be less than or equal to 3. So now we are going to go ahead and show that some of these things are true. Right, so now we know that a sub k plus 1 using our formula by extension is root of 2 plus a sub k, all right? And applying our assumption, assuming that our a sub k is going to be equal to 3, if we use that, then a sub k plus 1 would be equal to root of 2 plus 3, right? Which is root 5. Now, let me just scroll down here. All right. All right, just scrolling down a little bit here. All right. And changing the color. Since, since root 5, all right, root 5, you all know definitely is less than 3. You can use your calculators to check if that is true. Since root 5 is less than 3 and a sub k is less than 3, um, a sub k plus 1 is less than and equal to 3. So finally, therefore, p k plus 1 is true for all p sub k. All right, guys, so pretty much in a nutshell, uh, that's your answer there. Um, you would want to end off your question by stating that, uh, hence, by principle of mathematical induction, you would want to try to write out these uh, this acronym in its full glory, principle of mathematical induction. Um, hence, by PMI, we have proven that A sub N is less than A of sub N plus 1. And we have also proven that a sub n is less than and equal to 3 for all n uh, being an element of a set of natural numbers there. Okay, guys? So, um, if this question gives you um, issues sometimes, try to go through our principle of mathematical induction a little bit more and then come back in your attempt when you are looking at the solution to this question. But it wasn't too, too difficult. I admit it was a bit challenging than regular PMI questions, but it was not that terrible. Okay, guys? So stay tuned with me for more coming up soon. Okay, guys, so next question up on screen. We still are actually on uh, 2018. And remember that we are trying to draw out all of those uh, series and sequence questions into one, um, you know, nice little neat video. So if you look further down your past paper in 2018, you'll see this series question just pops up. And it's related to a different um, topic just before it. But I wanted to um, do this question in this video. So this question, upon analysis, you should be able to recognize that from the moment they're asking for the sum of the series. And you notice this nice, beautiful format here. All right, with this lovely subtraction sign in the middle, that should signal to you guys it's a method of difference question. All right, so um, start up your answer using uh, by method of differences or using method of differences, however you want to write it, that's fine. All right, so by method of differences, all right, um, we are going to go ahead and start substituting um, numerical values of n. Uh, when n has a value of 1, let's see what's going to take place. Um, when n has a value of 1, you would end up getting sine of 1 on 1, which is 1, minus sine of 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 2. What about when n has a value of 2? What's going to happen there? Let's see, you'll get sine of 1 on 2 minus sine of 1 over 2 plus 1 is 3. And then I like to do a third time, sometimes even a four time, if stuff 
um, and not canceling, right? So you'll have sine of when n is 3, you'll get 1 on 3. Subtract sine of 1 on 4, if you can see the pattern happening there. And um, on this side, I'm going to eliminate what you can see canceling right there. So if we were to do n equals 4, this would be canceled with whatever is here. So therefore, what we are left with on this side is sine of 1. And then next is I like to do my uh, what happens when n has a value of uh, n minus 2 and so on. So let's see what happens if we have n being n minus 2 in this case. Well, you're going to get sine of 1 of n minus 2 subtract sine of 1 over now n minus 2 plus 1 is n minus 1 all right let's check out what's happening when n is n minus 1 well we will get sine of 1 over n minus 1 subtract sine of n minus 1 plus 1 is simply 1 on n that looks good last one when n is just n <laughs> right we're gonna get sine of 1 on n subtract sine of 1 on n plus 1 let's see what's canceling here so we have uh, this cancels we have this cancels and I'm sure if we were to do an n minus 3 this was this would definitely cancel with something up here so it seems that we have just been left with this over here so now all that's left for us to do is simply put our answer together so I'll just minimize my screen just a bit here so I can do it all on one screen for you guys so the question is asking us to find the sum from 1 to infinity of a uh, sine 1 on n minus sine of 1 all over n plus 1 close brackets close brackets and we have found this essentially to be equal to sine of 1 subtract sine of 1 over n plus 1 so what you want to do is that's the summation of remember the question is asking us to find out what's happening as we approach infinity so we're going to state as our last line, we're going to state that the limit as n is approaching infinity of sine of 1 subtract sine of 1 on n plus 1 is going to give us what? What happens as n approaches infinity? Well, over here, we'll still get sine of 1. But over here, as n approaches infinity on a denominator, as that denominator keeps getting larger and larger and larger, you'll get 1 over a very large number, which goes to 0, right? So essentially, you will have sine of uh, 0. And you guys all know that sine of 0 is simply just, just goes away. It's 0. So lastly, our answer is just simply sine of 1. All right, guys, so that's the answer to this question. This was a pretty nice, easy question. Hopefully, you guys were able to pick up on the fact that, uh, you know, it was a method of difference question. Very easy question to get easy marks on. So stay tuned for more. Next up, a new past paper. Okay, guys, so we're finally on to a new past paper, 2017. So this, once again, as you can see on screen, we have another... PMI question. Okay, so I hope you took the time to pause the last question, review your PMIs a bit so you can understand these types of questions. Now, this one is a proof, so we'll begin by starting off our answer with the word proof here. And what do they want us to prove? Well, they want us to show that this uh, series over here is equal to a quarter n squared uh n plus one all squared now you guys know this this is actually a standardized um uh version of r cubed for pmis but um they're asking us to prove it here so we are going to start off with our answer by stating 
by meeting our, making our statement, right? So our standard statement begins with our PN statement and our statement is going to go as follows for that series from R starting from 1 all the way down to N. We can see that the formula will be R cubed, okay? So we have that R cubed. This is what they want us to prove essentially. All we have done is simply use that series given and converted it into a summation. All right, and they want us to prove that that is equal to a quarter n squared by n plus one all squared for all n being an element of natural numbers. Okay, so as with all PMIs, we start off with n being equal to one. So for n being equal to one, what will you get? Well, on the left hand side, when n is just simply one, you will end up getting one cubed, replacing that n for r, and using r as a value of one, or n as a value of one, you get one cubed. And on your right hand side, you will get a quarter of one squared by one plus one is two all squared. And you will get one is equal to one, which is a true statement. Therefore, P1 is true. Not too bad. That was nice and easy. Now comes our second part. Remember, the second part is essentially where you want to make that assumption. All right, so the first one you prove where n or r is true for one. Then the second part, you make your assumption. All right, so we're going to assume um, p sub n is true for n being equal to k. That is, p sub k is summation of r going from 1 to k r cubed being equal to a quarter k squared by k plus 1 squared. Okay, and with that assumption, it's going to take us into our statement that uh, if we're assuming that, then p sub k plus 1 is such that the summation of r going from 1 to k plus 1 for r cubed is equal to a quarter of k plus 1 all squared by k plus 1 plus 1, which is k plus 2, all squared. Now, for that assumption, we are going to prove that our p sub k plus 1 is going to look like this. So, we are going to start by finding out from what we know what p sub k plus 1 actually is. So p sub k plus 1 is going to be equal to p sub k plus our k plus 1 term. Not so if you think about it. And then what is pk? Well, p sub k from our assumption, right, is from over here, is k squared on 4 by k plus 1 all squared. Now, what is going to be our k plus 1 too? Now, if our function, I shouldn't say function, but if our formula is r cubed, then that should mean that our k plus 1 term would be k plus 1 cubed, right? And what we're going to do is just perform some algebra, and we are going to simplify this and see what we end up getting. We are trying to get this. All right, guys, so doing some legit algebra here, some serious algebra, we are going to arrive at, uh, let's see, we can multiply both sides across, well, we can multiply by 4, make a co common, uh, bringing that 4 as a denominator there, such that we get 4 over 4, all right, so we don't affect our question there, all right. And then I am going to bring these things together here. So we get k plus 1 squared on 4. So I have factorized a bit. And factorizing that out, I will be left with uh, k squared plus 4 into k plus 1. 
All right, you guys see that? So we factorize that quarter as well as the key plus one squared. Next line, I'm gonna just scroll up a bit, make it smaller. All right, and uh, next line, I am going to hold one common denominator there such that we get, uh, well, it's, 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 it literally is one common denominator, I mean. <laughs> I'm just gonna write everything on the numerator here, okay? Just to make it look a bit nicer. And cleaning this up a bit within brackets is going to eventually take us into k plus 1 all squared by k plus 2 all squared all over 4. And what do you know? Let's just do a quick comparison here. If you observe over here, we have k plus 1 squared, k plus 2 squared over 4. And down here, we have that. It's just that we have not really pulled that quarter outside. So we have proven what the question is asked us for. So therefore, this is the exciting finale. <laughs> when you have worked for it, right, you can see it there for uh, P sub A plus 1 is true. It is true, people. It is true. Use your symbols. It is true for all P key. All right. Um, and uh, let me see. You can end your statement, of course, if you want. You can go ahead and you can just end your statement here. And you can say, hence, by principle of mathematical induction, um, you can see that we one cubed plus a two cubed plus a dot 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 plus a n cubed is equal to a quarter of uh, n squared uh, by n plus 1 all squared for all n being an element of natural numbers. And draw your QED box. And you are finished. Uh, that's it. Okay, guys. So stay tuned. We have more parts to this question, which I will be doing um, in this video. Okay, so next up. We have a part two to the question we did before, and it's a hence question. So remember, whenever you see the word hence, that signals that if you use uh, your previous part, you're going to generate your answer much easier than an alternative method. And it's also a proof. So we're going to say um, hence here, because I am going to use what I had generated previously. Hence, and I'm going to start with my proof. All right, so proof. Hence, um, now what do we know from previously? From previously, we found out that, um, we found out that, uh, let's see, the summation from um, R, I think it was R going from uh, 1 to N of R cubed was equal to a quarter N squared of N plus 1 squared. All right, we proved that last time. So now they're asking us to show. They're asking us to show that the summation of i. So we're dealing with stuff in terms of i as well as n here. So look at the difference in letters, right? Um, the summation from i going from 1 to 2n plus 1 of i cubed. All right, so if i cubed um, is equal to what they have on this right-hand side. So what we are going to do is we are going to use what we learned previously, and we are going to try to attempt to generate the answer on screen there. So using this formula and using our n as uh, that 2n plus 1 there, we will get a quarter. All right, and instead of n squared, we are going to replace that n with the 2n plus 1. Also in brackets here, this n is 2n plus 1, so that's really 2n plus 2 all squared. And that's as easy as it goes. This is just a simple matter of cleaning up your algebra. You'll get a quarter of uh, 2n plus 1 uh, squared. Um, over here, you can factor out that 2, and you'll end up getting n plus 1, close bracket, still all squared outside, um, and 
I'll give you guys a last line here. 2n plus 1 squared. Um, remember, when you have powers, you want to bring in that power outside into each of the variables. So 2 squared gives us 4. And then you also have that n plus 1 as well being raised to the power of 2. And then finally, you want to try your best to twist your answer in such a way where it looks like what you need to prove which is why essentially i have not expanded any of my brackets because the final solution does not have an expansion of brackets so what you want to do is try your best to retain those brackets if you see them visible in your answer all right so um I, i'm noticing that um they do, did not have the quarter. That quarter has gone. It's disappeared. Which is why I am trying to retain some sort of 4 on a numerator so that stuff gets cancelled. And you'll see that that's going to happen right here. We're going to get rid of that 4. And boom. Just like that. We have arrived at our final destination. Woo! That was long. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't so bad. Okay, so this is our proof. We have successfully proven what the people have asked us. And just always remember to end your answers with that uh, QED box there. Okay, guys, stay tuned. We have one. Okay, guys, so on screen we are looking at 2016. And this is a sequence question. It looks loaded with words, but that's a good thing. When the question has given you a lot of content, it means that you have sufficient information to work out your solution. This question was actually very easy. So let's read. Uh, they said a sequence is defined by the recurrence relation. I'm going to write that a little bit larger on screen. It's defined by the recurrence relation u sub n plus 1 simply equal to u sub n minus 1 plus x by u sub n prime. And of course, they have also given us additional information, which we will step to the side and take note of. u sub 1 is 1, and u sub 2 is equal to x. And they have also explicitly stated that u sub n prime is the derivative of u sub n. So just highlight that you may need that information for part of the question. Let's see what they're telling us. So it's a nice thing. They said, for example, they showed you how to use your little recurrence relation over there in case you had slip ups and you were confused. And they're asking us uh, that given that u8 is equal to 13x plus 1 um, and that u10 is equal to 34x plus 1, they want us to find the value of, they want us to find uh, u sub 9 prime okay so how do you begin working a question like this well seeing that the recurrence relation has a connection with those sub numbers i'm going to try my best to play around starting with the largest sub number i know on screen which is u sub 10 now, of course, in exams, you may have chosen to start with a different one, perhaps u sub 8. But when you begin working with that, you may realize that at the end, you are not getting any closer to your answer. So you should be able to recognize that you need to just step one side, perhaps try a different alternative route and um, attempt to use something else that the question has given you, okay? Okay. So with me, let's see what happens when we use u sub 10. Now, we are going to use a recurrence relation here, right? And I am seeing that um, according to my recurrence relation here, um, u sub 10 is the same as u sub of uh, 9 plus 1, right? Um, which means that my n has a value of 9. So that is equal to u of, n has a value of 9, 9 minus 1 gives me 8. And I can see that I can use that u sub 8 right here. Continuing, that will give us plus x. Uh, x sub n, remember, our n has a value of 9. So that's 9 there. Sorry, this is supposed to be u. And boom, just like that, you can see what you are being asked present. So you know you're on the right track here. So let's just perform a little bit of cleanup 
in our statements, you will have that uh, u sub 10 is equal to u sub 8 plus x u sub 9 prime. And the question has given us that value for uh, u 10 as well as they have given us the value for u8. So we are going to simply substitute those values in here to create a nice simple equation to the, uh, that's to the 4. That is 24x plus 1. And uh, u8 is 13x plus 1. Don't you just love when terms just start disappearing and it turns into algebra? <laughs> okay, um, and then we have our one little unknown here so guys it's straightforward from here it's just a matter of making uh that u sub 9 the subject of the formula i'll just tell you guys after moving around terms you're gonna get, end up getting 21x on the left is equal to x uh u sub 9 prime on the right and of course those x's will just disappear which implies that u sub 9 prime is 21 so that's the value they're looking at so this question was actually nice simple and sweet stay tuned for the next part okay so the next part too is just a simple proof um the end partial sum of a series sn is given by the following and they want us to show that uh you know s sub n is equal to that on screen so we're gonna get straight into the answer over here now we have that s sub n is equal to the summation of um r r minus one from r starting from one to uh, n there and um if we were to just expand that you'll get r squared minus one all right so remember this is a proof okay and we can use our rules of our series you can split that up into two you can get r squared minus the summation of um sorry this was r minus the summation of r going from one to n there and you guys know we have standard rules for r squared and r so substituting those um standardized uh values you have n over six by n plus one by two n plus one and then you have minus n by n plus one all over two now i'm actually not going to perform this uh simplification because it's um a proof you should know but at the end you should be able to simplify this all into n by n squared subtract one all over three okay guys so that s n becomes the following so make sure you go through this standardized proof i would say some things you would need to do uh to find the common denominator of this line here you know simplify terms and um yep yeah, then you'll be able to get your answer i'm sorry if you're hearing a little bit of uh doggy noise in the background <laughs> so um stay tuned for the final question all right guys so the last and final part states hence or otherwise evaluate the sum of uh, r r minus one from ten to twenty. So this one is kind of straightforward. Um, you guys know we can just perform a simple split. All right. So um, let me just write down what we know. All right. So we have that um, the sum from one to twenty r r minus one right is equal to sum from 1 to 9 you guys should be able to break this down r minus 1 plus the sum from 10 to 20 of r r minus 1 or if you're not familiar in splitting stuff up like that some students rather um working it out directly so I, this is my method actually i prefer this a lot more you can say that is sum from 10 to 20 of r r minus 1 and you can go to your little sketch you can write if this is 1 and this is 20 and then 10 lies somewhere in the middle and what i want to generate are actually values from 10 to 20 then what i need to do is find a sum from 1 to 20 so that will be equal to the sum 
from 1 to 20 of r, r minus 1, and then I need to subtract out that sum from 1 to the number just before, which is 9. So I will need to subtract, going from 1 to 9, r of r minus 1. And of course, we can simply substitute those values. We can substitute r being 20 here. Okay, and you can get your values also when r has a value of 9. Sorry, this is supposed to be... Um, right, and we'll get minus 1 all over 3. Okay, and for those of you wondering where we got the uh, 20, 20 squared minus 1 on 3, just please recall that um, in part B, we had worked out that uh, S n is equal to n into uh, n squared minus 1 all on 3. So that's where uh, these parts here are coming from. Okay, and then finally, you can plug those into your calculator and you would be able to end up with a value of 24. 20. So guys, that's the evaluation for this part of the question. You can double check with me and you can uh, leave comments down below if you got alternative um, ways of finding the answer or perhaps you got a different answer. I will be sure to leave a timestamp in the description box below and um, look. By the way, um, in my past videos, if you did encounter any um, errors in my previous videos, I found them all thanks to you guys. And I left a timestamp in the description box um, with all the relevant corrections. So thank you so much for staying <laughs> tuned with me for so long. Um, be sure to look forward. Let me see. Perhaps next week. I'll be doing a video on um, binomial expansion because that's a highly requested video. And I'll be doing all the relevant past papers from 2019 all the way down to 2015. Okay, guys, so be safe, take care, and keep studying. I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Bye.